within the next decade, the world as we know it will come to an end. Governments, economies, and social networks are all terribly fragile, primed for collapse into anarchy, and you will need to learn to survive on your own. I recommend installing some blast doors, stocking up on canned goods, and learning to treat radiation sickness with your home medical kit. The image I have just painted for you is the same one sold by companies like the Vivos Global Shelter Network, who are offering space for rent in their survival bunkers. In the wake of the pandemic and the shadow of the Ukrainian war, their business is booming, attracting attention from media and investment from Silicon Valley billionaires. The goal of my dissertation is to interrogate the iterations of this narrative across what I'm calling bunker media. This includes rental advertisements, YouTube tutorials, and other prepper paraphernalia. So the bunker narrative primarily targets a customer, one with considerable disposable income and investments in narratives of traditional masculinity. In other words, bunkers sell to the middle-class man who wants to protect his family with force if necessary. But we should ask protect from whom? Because the bunker narrative creates an enemy for our middle-class protagonist, and this is not an accident or a coincidence. This is a fundamental part of the bunker pitch. There is no reason to invest in a backyard fortress if no one is invading. This enemy is also often coded through lenses of race, class, and ability, typically because people lack either the material resources or the physical capabilities to meet their own needs, this story says they will inevitably turn to violence. There is also an undeniable undercurrent of white supremacy in this narrative. The Vivos Global Shelter Network, for example, states that immigration invasions may be the eventual cause of the apocalypse. So you see, these stories are not just stories. They move millions of dollars, they shift tons of concrete, and even more importantly, they inspire ideas. If we see the future as a violent place, we will build violent technologies to meet it. If we see certain groups of people as unsalvageable, we will not build the networks required to support those people. In short, we will build bunkers, technologies designed not to preserve humanity, but to segregate it into survivors and casualties. Therefore, my dissertation also argues for the importance of an apocalyptic counter-narrative. Imagine how different our future-facing technologies will look if instead of wallowing in the inevitability of isolation and violence, we focused instead on the importance of sustainability, compassion, and difference. Thank you. <laughs>